graphing. So on this page, basically how it works is we are going to translate from one form of information to another, whether or not we know an object's displacement to begin with, and then we're translating to a velocity or an acceleration graph, or we might know the velocity to begin with, and we're going to work backwards to, to get a displacement graph out of the deal or acceleration out of the deal. So uh, this can be something that's a little bit of a point of confusion for some students. So you are definitely not alone if this is something that is, is confusing to you at all. Uh, just because it's such a new way of thinking, such a different way of thinking about information. But the important thing here is not necessarily the, the, the physics behind the scenes. The important thing here is really that we're learning to translate from one form of data to another. And you think about all the data that's in the world, uh, and it's a really big really big deal to be able to translate from one form of data to another. People that are able to do that, especially in the workforce, job force, you know, you can really uh, move up the move up the ranks pretty quick by understanding how to how to analyze data because not everybody knows how to do it and you will know how to do it by the end of this. So, let's take a look at this first problem here. Um, I'm just going to number these real quick so we can talk about them in terms of problem 1 2 3 4 and so on and so forth. All right, so let's see what we've got going on here in this displacement versus time graph. So to begin with, think about what displacement means. And that's just the distance from our start to our finish. If uh, we're thinking about it as like our distance from, from home after a road trip or something like that, it could mean my distance between any two objects. But remember, it's, it's path independent. So displacement just literally means how far out of place I am from where I was originally. And that will make a little bit more sense when we go through this first part here. So um, when you look at a graph like this, if it, you can't just look at it and say, oh, I know this, this object stopped, uh, then what you probably want to do is diagram it out because most people would not be able to just look at this graph and say, oh, this represents a, a stopped object. Um, and here's what, I, here's what I mean by diagramming this out. So we know for sure that this point on my x-axis is going to be at zero. Uh, this point on my on my y-axis is also going to be at zero. Now the weird thing about these graphs is there's no numbers associated with them. So if that's something that freaks you out like it does me, I like putting some numbers in just to at least show me kind of what's happening on the on my y-axis or what's happening on my x-axis. So yes, we know that there's an increase, but now having some numbers there in front of us kind of gives us this, this concrete feel of exactly what's going on. So here's what I mean by diagramming the scenario out. All right, so zero, that would be sort of home base, and I'm gonna draw a horribly drawn house here, I'm sure, looks more like an arrow than anything, but that's about as good as I can do. And then uh, that's gonna represent point zero. Um, over here would be Point, uh, point 10, 10 meters away from the house, 10 miles away from the house, 10 something away from the house, 10 units away. And that could be my, you know, my final location. Um, we don't really know what the location is. We don't really care what the location is. We just know that it's going to be um, 10 units of distance away from my house or my home location. So zero here, 10 here. So if we were to describe what's happening to this object to begin with at this point. In other words, zero seconds have passed. Where is my object? If you think about it, uh, we are about halfway between zero and ten. So I would be able to say, well, my object's at about five meters. So where would I draw it up here on this on this line? I'd be able to say, well, my object is at five meters right there. The X will represent my object. So here's how we can actually see whether or not this object is moving, stopped, speeding up, slowing down. Um, you know, is it a, a constant acceleration that we're dealing with, just a constant velocity, or some sort of combination thereof? So what I can do now, I say, let's go over one, one time interval. And I'm just drawing these time intervals down here so I have something to refer back to in terms of being able to look at what's happening in my, my displacement. So at zero seconds, we're five meters away from home, or we're halfway between home and the, and the final location. At one second, or again, one hour, one minute, whatever you want this one to be, it looks like we're still 
at five meters. So in other words, I haven't I haven't moved. I'm still in the same location. By the time we get over to two here, it looks like I'm still at five meters. And by the time I get over to three, I'm still at five meters. So in other words, I haven't moved this entire time. So we'd be able to say then that this object is stopped. Uh, it does have a velocity. It just so happens that it's a velocity of zero, but it is um, it is stopped. Um, think about sort of the where you are right now. You're most likely sitting in a in a in a room, uh, listening to this, and you have some sort of displacement between you and the doorway. Your displacement between you and the doorway is not getting any larger or getting any smaller if you're just sitting in a chair. So think about what you're doing. You're you're stopped. So when I go to translate this into a velocity versus time graph, I have to keep a couple of things in mind, or really one thing in mind mainly. Um, and I'm actually going to write this write this out, and I'd encourage you to do the same with this. Um, so what exactly is happening here? Well, my displacement, I'm just going to abbreviate disp for displacement. My displacement is not changing. And if it's not changing, that means I'm not moving. So I'm going to write displacement is not changing. Therefore, so these little three dots represent the word therefore, the object is not moving. All right. So let that sink in for a second. If our displacement is not changing from one location to the next, that must mean that I'm not I'm not moving. Um, I would be moving if that displacement were actually changing. So let's take a look at the second uh, second part of this problem here. Uh, excuse me. So for our velocity, then if we're not moving, what we'd be able to say is uh, we are at zero meters per second of velocity. Um, and don't confuse that with a constant line up here, for example, because that would actually be different. That would mean that we, we are, in fact, moving. Um, so it has to be a constant or a flat line specifically at zero because I have zero meters per second of speed. So therefore, if my displacement is not changing, the object's not moving, that then means that my velocity is specifically zero meters per second because of course that's what zero meters per, per second would represent not moving going no meters in any given a period of time so then finally, this acceleration is done for us already, um, but we do want to, of course, still talk about why it is why it is what it is. Um, so if we look at the, the previous graph here, uh, we know that our our velocity is zero, so we're we're stopped, which also means that we're not speeding up, we're not slowing down. Um, so in other words, we're not accelerating. So what I like to do when I go from one form of graph to another to another is after you know what's happening in this graph so we know that the displacement's not changing uh, which means the object's not moving I actually don't even think about the graph anymore when I move on to this next part I only think about the concept and the concept here is my displacement isn't changing or I'm, I'm not moving so then thinking that I'm not moving I then on my velocity versus time graph look at it as well what does not moving represent well, that would be zero meters per second that I'm that I'm traveling at. In other words, I'm, I don't have any meters that I am traveling in a, in a given period of time, like I just said. So then, for my acceleration, I'd be able to say, well, let's forget about this whole graph. Um, let's only think of the concept. My velocity is specifically zero meters per second, um, or I'm I'm not speeding up. I'm not slowing down. So then when I get to my acceleration graph, I can say, well, what does not speeding up, not slowing down look like? Well, it looks like having no, no acceleration. No matter how long the time's going on for, I don't have any sort of increase in acceleration or decrease in acceleration. It's just a constant. It's a, specifically a constant at zero. So when we do see a, a, a constant line 
at zero for acceleration, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm stopped. Because it could mean that I'm actually moving. I'm just not, uh, I'm not speeding up. I'm not slowing down. I'm just staying at the same rate. I could be moving really, really, really fast. Like right now, for example, the Earth is you know, rotating around 1,000 miles an hour. We don't feel it because there's no acceleration, uh, but we're moving really fast. It's just not speeding up. It's not slowing down, and that's a really, really good thing. So for this final graph here, I'd be able to say that my acceleration is not increasing or decreasing. and is at zero because it's not increasing or decreasing here. All right, so the written description, I like to write right on top of the other graphs, obviously, here. So we don't have to worry about the, the written description over here. We've already got the written description in here. All right, my displacement is not changing, which means I'm not moving. If I'm not moving, that means I have no velocity. If I have no velocity, that means I'm not accelerating because I'm not speeding up and I'm not slowing down either. Okay, So hopefully you feel pretty confident with that one. And uh, moving on, we will go a little bit faster here. I just wanted to at least explain that first one in a, in a lot of depth. All right, so let's take a look at the second example here. We've got this uh, nothing for displacement, nothing for acceleration, so we have to start with velocity here. Uh, my velocity, it looks like, is something, right? I don't know what that something is, and I, of course, could put numbers in and kind of play around with what this what this velocity might be because in the end, I don't care about the number. I care about the concept. So if we do take a look at this and put a couple of time increments in here, it could be anything, 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15, 20, 100, 200, 300, it really doesn't matter what that time increment is. And one, two, three probably makes the most sense though. So to begin with, my velocity looks like it's at, I don't know, eyeballing that, I'd say around eight meters per second. Um, and then it looks like a second later, I'm still at eight meters per second, still at eight meters per second, and still at eight meters per second. So in other words, I am moving because I have velocity, but I'm not speeding up, I'm not slowing down. I'm just moving at a constant rate. So in other words, my, my distance would be changing in this case. It would just be changing at a constant rate. So here I would be able to say that my distance, I'm sorry, my velocity is constant. And since it's not constant at zero, it's constant at some other number. Um, in our little example here, it could be eight, but who knows, it could be, could be anything. We just know that the velocity is, is constant, uh, which means the, the object is moving. Whatever this object happens to be. All right. Um, so now, again, I don't really care about this graph anymore. I care about the concept that we've got some sort of velocity um, and it is a constant velocity, so my object is my object is moving. So, what would a moving object look like um, if it's moving at a constant rate on this displacement first time graph? And here's how we can think about it. My um, let's say we've got our our house, and we are traveling away from it. Uh, each one of these hash marks that I'm drawing in here, these little lines that I'm drawing in here, represents a time interval. So it would be zero at home, and then one, two, three, four. I'm going away from home. Since these time intervals are consistent, uh, I've got the same spacing or even spacing from one to the next. What that means is I'm going at a constant velocity because I'm covering the same amount of distance within each one of these time increments. So if I'm covering the same amount of distance within each one of these time increments, that would look like on my displacement first time graph would be something like this. To begin with, I'm at home, and really, technically, we don't we don't know where we are. To begin with, uh, it could be that we are you know, 
right right at home it could mean that we are far away the velocity versus time graph doesn't actually tell us our position it's only our displacement versus time graph that does that so then my slope would look something like this it doesn't matter if it's real shallow it could be really steep it could be somewhere in between i just the only thing i know is that my displacement is changing um, i'm increasing we could even look at it on a on a graph here I'm increasing the amount of displacement at each one of these time intervals and I'm increasing it at a constant rate so constant rate would look like this and that slope should be a little bit more even but it is what it is of course I'm just trying to get a, a rise here it shouldn't be diagonal at all even with notability, apparently, I can't draw a straight line. <coughs> All right, so now when I'm taking a look at this acceleration graph, I have to take into account what was happening. And it doesn't matter. I don't have to think about both of these graphs here. It doesn't matter which one I think of. Um, if it makes more sense for me to look at this and say my velocity is constant, and then draw that on the acceleration graph, that's great. If um, you know, some one of your friends would prefer to look at it the other way, like our distance is constantly increasing over time, then that's fine too. There's not a, a better route to, to go here. Uh, personally, I would say the easiest is probably to look at the velocity graph and realize that our velocity is constant. It's a little bit harder to get that information from the distance first time graph, or more technically displacement first time graph. If our velocity is constant, that means my acceleration is not, it's not increasing, it's not decreasing, it is at zero. And this is, like I said before with the, the previous example, it doesn't mean that I'm not moving, it just means that I'm, I'm not increasing in terms of my speed. My acceleration is not increasing or decreasing which just means I'm not speeding up. Doesn't actually mean that I am, I am stopped. I, if I were to just look at this acceleration graph, I wouldn't actually know what was going on. I, I would know that you know, I'm not speeding up, which means I'm either stopped, or I could be going extraordinarily fast and just not speeding up anymore or slowing down. Um, so an acceleration versus time graph doesn't give us a whole ton of information in and of itself, we really do need to pair it with a velocity versus time graph and a displacement versus time graph to get a full picture of what's happening with, a, um, with an object's motion. All right, so let's take a look at number three here. Uh, number three is very similar to the second one here. Uh, the only difference is, so I'm not even gonna write in the, the full explanations here because it's gonna be um, explained very much the same as above. The only difference is my velocity here looks like it's closer to the, the x-axis. So if we were to say that our, our units for velocity were the same and our intervals were the same and everything else uh, was the same, it looks like this velocity is not as large as the velocity above. Uh, so I'm still moving at a constant rate. The only difference would be that now my amount of displacement from my home location uh, as I'm as I'm traveling on is not getting as large as quickly so what that would look like is if I drew this drew this out as a diagram here um, it would be that I am traveling a, a smaller amount of distance displacing a smaller amount of meters over the course of time here whereas above I, w I had more distance between each one of those hash marks, so I must have been going faster in order for that to happen. Now in reality, I don't know the increments here, so it might be that you know, number two and, and three, they look identical. Uh, we don't have to necessarily look at them in relation to one another, but assuming that our, our increments are the same for here and down here, then it should be that I've got a little bit less displacement over time. And we already know this velocity is constant here, so I'm not going to have any sort of acceleration. Again, don't confuse it with, you know, that I'm stopped. It just means I am, 
I have a constant acceleration. So either I am stopped or I'm moving. Well, we already know from the velocity graph that we are moving. We're just not speeding up or slowing down. So let's take a look at problem four here. Um, now I've got this displacement graph with a, a negative slope. So we've got to think, does this mean that we are you know, going back towards our home location? Does this mean that we're slowing down, uh, going down? Like, what exactly does this mean? And unfortunately, I don't have any more information here for my velocity or my acceleration quite yet. So what this would look like, if you are into drawing some numbers in just to kind of give yourself some mock data to analyze, um, it looks like well, my displacement's maybe around eight, right? If I did go from zero to ten, you can go zero to a hundred, and you know your displacement would probably be around eighty or something like that. Um, zero to ten is just a nice, easy one to deal with, though. And then we could put in some mock time data. So let's say one second, two, three, four, and I would be able to look at this and say, well, it looks like to begin with. I'm eight meters away from my home location. So home location would be here, and I am eight meters away. I guess I'll draw that as, a, as an X, just to keep it consistent with what we did with problem one. So I'd say that from home to that location is eight meters. All right, it looks like at a second, I'm getting closer to zero. In other words, I'm getting closer to home. So I'm moving this direction. By the time I get down to two, it looks like I'm about a little, little over halfway away. Uh, by the time I get down to the third, I'm getting closer and closer. Fourth, I'm getting closer and closer. So it looks like I'm actually, if we were to draw this out with hash marks, it looks like what's happening here is I'm here to begin with and then I'm traveling this direction towards home. It's at a constant rate, so I have the same amount of distance between my first time increment and my second time increment. Um, so in other words, we are moving, we have a velocity, and it's a constant velocity because my distance is changing at the same rate from one location to the next or one time increment to the next. Another way to look at this would be mathematically and say, well, what does this slope of this line represent? It represents velocity. How do I know that? Well, because slope is a rise over run, and I have a distance over a time, which is the definition of velocity, how much distance we're covering over a period of time. So my slope is constant. just so happens that it's a, a constant negative because my displacement is negative, which would mean my velocity is negative. So now when I go over here, what I can do is I, I could think, well, my, my displacement is getting smaller and smaller, which is giving me this negative velocity. So I know I'm going to be dealing with something in this region um, because it's a, again, it's a, it's a negative velocity. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm slowing down here. It just means that I am going down. I'm going back towards my initial location, back towards home. Um, at a constant rate though, a constant velocity. So my constant velocity would look like that, whether or not it's in the, you know, the negative region at zero or above, any one of those would be a constant velocity. On the line would be a very specific constant velocity of zero, but below the line tells me that my, my velocity is negative um, and it is staying constant. So from one time increment to the next, looks like my velocity is the same, the same, the same. All right, so let that sink in for a second. When you're in the negative region of a graph here for velocity, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're slowing down. You might be, um, but it's, it's very dependent upon what's happening in our displacement first time graph. So we are, in fact, going at a constant rate. We are not slowing down. Um, slowing down would actually look like this in most cases on a velocity versus time graph in the negative region, which we'll talk about in just a, just a moment. So then finally, we can say, well, my velocity is staying constant. Since my velocity is constant, that means that I have no acceleration. In other words, I'm not speeding up, I'm not slowing down. So for the first four problems, 
that actually deals with constant velocity. Uh, we don't have any sort of acceleration there.